So here we want to take a couple minutes out and look at what are called Fisher projections here. So in a Fisher projection, it's just another perspective in looking at a tetrahedral atom. So in this case, these horizontal bonds on a Fisher projection correspond to the wedged bonds here on the horizontal. So, and the vertical positions on a Fisher projection correspond to dashed bonds. So and it's kind of a, a useful perspective in looking at a tetrahedral atom because you'll never have the fourth party group in the plane. It'll always be a wedge or a dash, and that makes it much easier to assign R and S. Uh, and in this case, you need to know a couple things about it, that it's only an accurate portrayal uh, in looking at one chiral center at a time, but it's not a true three-dimensional portrayal of the molecule. So it turns out you're not just allowed to rotate them any, any way you want to willy-nilly. So uh, it turns out the only rotation you're allowed to do is to rotate them 180 degrees in the plane, so at a time. And so in this case, if we put R4 here, so and then R3 here, R2 here, and R1 here, it turns out this is the same thing as the first Fisher projection, but you're not allowed to rotate it 90 degrees. So let's just say we started with R1 here, and then R4 here, and then R3 here, and R2 here. So this is not equivalent to any of the two structures we've drawn here. You're not allowed to just rotate it 90 degrees. You're also not allowed to rotate it out of the plane 180 degrees either. So it's rotating in the plane 180 degrees. So if we try to rotate it out of the plane 180 degrees, and maybe put R3 here, and R1 here, so and left R4 and R2 right where they were. So this would actually give you its enantiomer, and again, this would not be equivalent to our original Fisher projection. So, and again, this is not true three-dimensional portrayal uh, of a molecule, so you gotta be a little careful on what rotations are possible. So with real three-dimensional portrayals of a molecule, you can rotate them any way you want to, and it's the same molecule. Not true with a Fisher projection, so you gotta be a little careful with them. So let's take a look at the structures we've got here, and let's turn them into Fisher projections. So in this case, it's customary for a Fisher projection to draw them vertically when you have many tetrahedral atoms. So in this case, we've got three tetrahedral atoms. So we've got methyl group at the top, methyl group at the bottom. And so in this case, it doesn't really matter which one we put at the top or bottom, uh, but normally whichever uh, you find your most oxidized carbon, you put them as close to the top as you can. It's kind of the, the, the general rule in doing this. Now, in this case, the question is where do the bromine and the hydrogen go and stuff like that. The middle carbon here has got two hydrogens. He's easy. So, but if we get the bromine wrong here, so that's going to lead us to some problems. Let's just choose away here. I'm going to put a bromine on the right, hydrogen on the left. I might have done it exactly backwards, and if I did, I'll have those two groups trade places and get, get us right back to where we were. So, and typically what I like doing is just assigning R and S here. So here's carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, and this is in the R configuration. If I did the same thing for this carbon here, so here'd be priority one, priority two, priority three, and this thing looks R and it's really S. And so it turns out I got this exactly backwards. So let's go back and erase these and get them correct here. So in this case, we've got then properly the bromine on the left and the hydrogen on the right. So, and now this would also be in the R configuration. So again, the hydrogen here is on the the wedged position being on the horizontal. And so it looks like now that it's gonna be uh, S, but it's really R. So, and finally, let's go to the last one here down at the bottom. So, and again, if we sign chirality here, this is the meso version, so this is S, so right off the bat. And in this case, to get this bottom one S, so one, if I know he's the meso, I know that there should be an internal plane of symmetry. So I'll do it that right, right off the bat and kind of cheat. But how we got it wrong, we have the hydrogen bromine trade places. But in this case here, let's do this in blue to contrast. So here's priority one, priority two, priority three, and as we go around the circle, we can see it's a right-handed turn, which would correspond to R, but again, with our lowest priority group, hydrogen on the horizontal, that's a wedged position, so this thing is really the opposite, and therefore is really S. Cool, and so there's our two chiral centers, one R, one S, and again, this is the meso, and you can so see that internal mirror plane, verifying that it's achiral, and then again, with two chiral centers being achiral and having chiral centers, it is, again, our meso compound we've already looked at. So. We kind of look at the other two. Having this first one drawn will make these two really easy. So again, methyl group on top, methyl group on bottom, three tetrahedral atoms, middle one's got two hydrogens. So in this case, I can see that 
this carbon right here is in the same configuration as this one right here, and so I'll draw it in the same configuration. So, and it's still going to be R. So, but this carbon right here is in the opposite one of the previous molecule, and so I'll put it in the opposite configuration. I'll put the bromine on the right, I'll put the hydrogen on the left, and what's nice about these Fisher projections as well is if there's an internal mirror plane, you're likely to see it, and there's not one here, and it'd be easier to see that this thing's definitely chiral. So, in the uh, kind of line angle formula here, I can put that in a whole bunch of different rotational conformations to try and hide that internal mirror plane from you, but it's going to be much more difficult for me to hide it in a Fisher projection. So, and finally, if we do the last one here, and again, middle carbon's got the two hydrons. So, and I see that this is perfectly the en enantiomer here of that middle one here. So, both chiral centers get flipped. So, here I'll put the bromine on the right, and the hydrogen on the left, opposite of what we did right here. So on the bottom chiral center, I'll put the bromine on the left and the hydrogen on the right, again, opposite of what we did right here. Now that's going to make these configurations 1s, so, and the other one s, where in the previous molecule they were both r. Cool, and there's our Fisher projection. So I highly recommend if you're going from line angle to Fisher or Fisher line angle that you just kind of assign R and S and make them match. So there can be a little bit of method to madness, but it's prone with errors, especially for undergraduates. So I, again, highly recommend just assign R and S and going from one to the other.